tonight, Eric Harris in the second inning hit his sixth home run of the year. In the sixth inning as a pinch hitter, Alex Cora hit his second home run of the year. In the same inning, Sean Green hit his 17th home run of the year. And in the ninth inning, Sean Green did it again, hitting his 18th. But you're wrong, because four Kings will lose to an ace. Garrett Anderson and the Angels. Tonight, it's Dallas Perez in game two of the series. for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Fox Sports Net 2 presents the Dodgers as they take on the Anaheim Angels. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Saturday night to you, wherever you may be. The Angels and the Dodgers, each one game out of first place, and very aware of the schedule. For instance, the Angels now have a little relief because Oakland lost today to the San Francisco Giants. But by the Giants winning, that puts a little extra pressure coming up from behind against the Dodgers. As far as the front-running teams, Seattle at San Diego tonight, Arizona with Detroit tonight. So that part of the story will unfold along with our ball game. And in our game tonight, Scott Schoenweiss will be on the mound for Anaheim. He's won four in a row to get his record to five and four. Odalis Perez, a six-game winner, coming off a great effort where he struck out 10 against Baltimore, and he had to pitch well. That was a tough one, and he won it two to one. Game two of the three-game series. Overall, the Angels have won 14 to the Dodgers, 13. Pull up a chair. We'll have a good one, and we'll be back with the lineup right after this. Dodger baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. By Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Gatorade is it in you? And by Nissan Driven. A glorious early summer's evening here in Los Angeles, and a large crowd continues to file into Dodger Stadium. And we certainly figure to have another crowd in excess of 50,000. Last night, we had 51,722. So it is very obvious, not only here, but in every major league city, that the fans love the interleague play. For the second game in a row, for instance, they had 54,000 at Shea. They had a full house at Wrigley. They had big crowds in Houston. And for that matter, they had a large crowd of almost 48,000 in St. Louis. So the folks like it, and the Dodgers and the Angels are ready to go after each other one more time. Tomorrow, the concluding game of the three here. Later at the end of the month, there'll be a three-game series in Anaheim. Let's take a look at the visiting Angels. One game back of Seattle, and they will have David Eckstein leading off at shortstop and Darren Erstad in center field. Troy Gloss will be at third base, and Garrett Anderson hits cleanup in left field. Tim Salmon will be in right. Scott Spezio will be at first base. Benji Molina will be behind the plate. Benji Gill will be at second base hitting eighth. And Scott Schoenweiss will be the pitcher. He is five and four, but he's won four in a row. For Jim Tracy and for the Dodgers trying to win their 40th game, they can hear footsteps because San Francisco, right behind the Dodgers, San Francisco started the day a game and a half behind, and they won this afternoon against Oakland. So the Dodger lineup will go this way. As Brian Jordan is loosening up in the dugout, he's got a ways before he'll hit. In front of him would be Cesar Torres at shortstop, followed by Paul LaDuca behind the plate. Sean Green, who hit two out last night, will be in right field. Brian Jordan will hit cleanup in left field. Then you have Eric Karras at first. Marquise Grissom returns to the wars to alternate with Dave Roberts. Grissom's turn against the left-hander. Mark Grasolonic at second base. Adrian Beltre is batting eighth in the lineup. 
and Odalis Perez will be the pitcher batting ninth. Odalis coming in in quest of his seventh win. He has won two in a row. The overall record, six wins and three losses. So the ball game just about ready. We'll be back. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. Hope you have a lovely Saturday night. The weatherman has certainly given us a great opportunity for it, and the Dodgers and the Angels hope to provide the thrill. Another crowd of over 50,000 is expected for game two of the series. Scott Schoenweiss on the mound for the Angels and Odalis Perez for the Dodgers. And as usual, the lovely custom of the youngsters running out with a player and each player signing that child's autograph and then the young girl or boy, as the case may be, will jog off the field. It's one of the better ideas baseball has had in quite a while. So here at Dodger Stadium, the kids are leaving the field, and in a moment, the big guys will dig in for the Anaheim Angels after a somewhat disastrous start this year where they won six and lost 14. They have certainly turned it around. Their record since then, 33 and 11. The Angels have won 22 games at home, 17 on the road, so they're trying to win their 40th tonight. And the Dodgers have done the same thing, only in a different attitude. The Dodgers have won 22 on the road and won 17 at home. David Eckstein followed by Darren Erstad and then Troy Glaude. Another interesting thing as Odalis Perez begins to tune up, each team is dynamite against left-hand pitching, so this should be pretty interesting. The Anaheim Angels are 13 and 5 against left-hand starters. Perez will have to encounter that. The Dodgers have the best record in the National League against left-hand starters. They are 13 and 4. So Mike Sosha and his pitcher Scott Schoenweiss will have to confront that in a moment. But right now it's Perez on the rubber and ready to face the Angels. Anaheim one game back of Seattle and Seattle playing San Diego tonight. The Dodgers one game back of Arizona and Arizona is playing Detroit. Interesting in talking baseball with Mike Sosha before the game and we were talking about how it's virtually impossible to figure out this great game and someone made the remark to Mike isn't that something that the Tigers the Detroit Tigers would manhandle Kurt Schilling. And so she said, let me tell you something. Detroit is a terrific fastball hitting team. Well, Randy Johnson is on the mound tonight, and the leadoff man for Detroit hit the first pitch of Johnson's kneecap for a base hit. So we'll keep you posted. David Eckstein checks in at the plate. Perez starts him with a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Eckstein, rather remarkable. A little guy, it is questionable whether he is actually 5 feet 8 or not. He has three grand slams. That puts him in company with Joe Rudy, who did it twice. He bunts a little one-hopper fielded by Beltre, who throws him out. So a beautiful bunt by Eckstein, but Beltre makes that play as well as anybody who ever played third base. And down goes Eckstein, one away. Second, number 17. Al Beltre can make an off-balance throw and get as much on the throw as he does is truly remarkable, but he does it. One of the many reasons, in fact, three reasons why the Angels have done so well against left-hand pitching, Eckstein hitting 353, Erstad 355, and Spezio 368 against left-hand pitching. So Erstad, a remarkable center fielder, a left-hand batter, he takes a hook for a strike and they count 0-1. Erstad last night had three singles. Darren covers a great deal of ground with body and soul in center field hitting 295 with four home runs 34 runs batted in Perez works it down and away and the count one ball and one strike. Well Perez coming off a gem that he pitched against Baltimore when he struck out 10 and had a very tough ball game and came off a winner two to one went eight innings in that game but Dallas delivers and Erstad swings doesn't get it. And the count one and two. Perez earlier this year had a four game winning streak from the middle of April to almost the middle of May. Then he had a couple of losses and he now has won two in a row against Milwaukee and Baltimore. 
One ball and two strikes they count to Darren Erstad. Odalis into his windup. Left hander comes back in the dirt and it's scooped out nicely by Laduca. And the count two balls and two strikes. Darren Erstad has certainly been one of the main reasons why the Angels have gotten off the floor after that bad start. And he is also one of the more successful hitters in interleague play, but not this time as he swings at a breaking ball and strikes out. So we have two down Running in the first inning. And a reminder, Who in tonight's me? game, we're participating Roy. in the Cap Cure yes. Home Run Challenge. Every home run hit tonight raises $27,000 from your pledges for prostate cancer research. If you'd like to make a pledge, give us a call at 1-800-547-CURE. Sean Green hit two last night. Then you had home runs by Karras and Cora and also a home run by Garrett Anderson. So five home runs last night sent a bunch of money towards Cap Cure. Now Troy Gloss takes inside ball one one and all the count to the big third baseman who is as good a player as he is impressive looking 13 home runs 52 RBIs with five career home runs here at Dodger Stadium hits one off the end of the stick Perez picks it up turns lobs it almost threw it over Kara's head and that'll do it for Gloss and for the Angels. They go down one, two, three. So at the end of half an inning, the Angels nothing, and the Dodgers coming up. Odalis Perez sets the Angels down quickly, one, two, three, in direct contrast to Kaz Ishi last night, who made 17 pitches in the first inning. Now the Dodgers will look at Scott Schoenweiss at a Long Branch, New Jersey, that's close to what they call the Jersey Shore. He's 28 years old and even six, 185 pounds, and he has turned things around because his life has turned around. His son, Hudson, was born on May the 4th, and ever since, he has won four in a row. He was one and four with an ERA of six until his wife, Gabrielle, gave birth to Hudson, and wonderful things have happened ever since. Now he'll be facing Cesar Asturias, Paul LaDuca and Sean Green. He's a sinker ball pitcher, so the infield figures to be busy if he has his stuff. And a sinker in for a strike, and they count on one. Is Turris a switch hitter, but a far better hitter right-handed? In fact, there's about 120 points between left and right as he takes low and inside, and they count one ball, one strike. The fastball about 91, so is Turris. Playing last night, dazzled in the field, did not do much with the bat hitting left-handed. He takes down and away, ball two in the count, two and one. For Sean Weiss, he has walked 33 and struck out 37. Last year, he struck out more than he walked, but he walked a lot. The 2-1 pitch is whacked to the gap in left center, but here's Erstad over to plug it. And just like that, one away. So is Turris, a long out to center, one down. And Paul LaDuca will be the batter. Number 16. Catcher. The Dodgers, as we Paul said, 13 and LaDuca. 4 against left-hand starters. And they've won 8 of the last 11 at Dodger Stadium. For that matter, the Dodgers have won their last 5 series and 7 of the last 8. But they're going to have to do it the hard way and win 2 straight tonight and tomorrow to win the series from the Angels. Paulie hitting 3.07. With only two home runs, but of course hitting in the number two slot, he has a lot of other consideration. He has gone without a home run since late in May, and he takes a fetch low, ball one, one and oh. So for Paulie with 25 home runs last year and two this year, but still a 307 batting average with 28 runs batted in. He looks at a sinker low, so Sean Weiss behind two balls and no strikes. Laduca backed up by Sean Green. Sean Weiss looks down the barrel to get a sign. Left hander kicks and deals, misses again. So he's behind the Laduca, 3 0. So Sean Weiss backed up by Spezio, Gill, Eckstein, and Gloss. And Sean Green waiting in the on deck circle. The pitch in for a strike, and the count 3 and 1. Anderson, Erstad, and Salmon in the outfield. 
Dodgers have been on a home run hitting tear of late. 33 home runs in the last 20 games. 3 1 pitch, and Laduca hits a high drive to deep left field. Back goes Anderson. Gone. Make it 34 home runs in 21 games. Last night it was Eric Karras to give the Dodgers a one to nothing lead with a home run in the second inning. Tonight Paul LaDuca hits one in the first inning and then looks up to the heavens and sends his mom his love. So it's always a dramatic moment when LaDuca reaches the seats and then as he scores he looks up to the heavens and all of us can understand why. Now the batter is Sean Green. And Green with two home runs last night. Sean Weiss ready and delivers. Breaking ball a strike on one. With that home run by Paul LaDuca, another $27,000 has been raised to support prostate research. On one to count to Green. He swings, rolls one foul outside of first, and the count 0 and 2. For Sean Weiss, the seventh home run that he's allowed, and Paul LaDuca, his third home run of the year. And he had gone 136 at bats since he had last hit one out. 0 oh and 2 the count to Sean Green batting 280. Sean Weiss deals and that's low and inside ball one and the count one and two. Sean Green two for four last night. In fact that brought up an interesting question. The Dodgers had only four hits last night all four home runs. Meanwhile, a towering fly ball to center. Erstadt to the wall. That one is gone. So Sean Green, who hit two last night, now has homered in three consecutive at bats, and the Dodgers lead two to nothing. Boy, you talk about lightning striking twice. It has struck three times. It was a breaking ball down and out over the plate and it was hit so high it was questionable would it carry out but it did. So the Dodgers now leading two to nothing and Brian Jordan will be coming up and another twenty seven thousand dollars raised to support prostate research. So that's fifty four thousand dollars and we're only in the first inning. Sean Weiss ready in deals and the pitch to Jordan is low ball one. Jordan is the most successful Dodger hitter against left hand pitching. He's hitting 379. Though so Green suddenly now has 19 home runs. The 1 0 pitch on the way. Hard ground ball inside third and down the line. Chasing it is Anderson. Jordan is into second base, standing with a double. And Sean Wise has to feel like the sky has fallen on him. Home run by LaDuca. Home run by Green. Double by Jordan. So the home run boys, LaDuca and Green, chatting in the far corner of the Dodger dugout. Mike Sosha sitting back, staring out at his pitcher. And now the infielders gather around Sean Wise to see if they can at least break the mood. So Gloss gave it his best shot, but all three balls well hit. And the Dodgers now with one out will have Eric Karras coming up. Bud Black, the pitching coach for Anaheim, who they say has done a great job in helping Sean Weiss, it said that Black kind of found an arm slot, found something mechanically that was helping Sean Weiss, and Bud, a fine pitcher in his day, trying to help Sean Weiss now. So two home runs and a double and with one out in the first inning the Dodgers lead two to nothing. So remarkable now that's 35 home runs in 20 games plus one inning. And the batter is Eric Carroll who torched one out last night. He has six. For Carroll an extremely successful hitter in interleague play with 24 home runs. And Eric takes a fastball strike and the count 0 and 1. So Karras waiting. The Dodgers know that the Giants won. They beat Oakland this afternoon. So the Giants technically two back. Strike one pitch is a breaking ball hit foul, but way down the line. That was in on the hands, 
And he didn't have much of a chance to do anything but pull it foul. So Eric Harris waiting at the plate. No balls and two strikes the count. Sean Weiss left foot on the rubber. Scotty looks in to get a sign. Now the strike two pitch coming up. Karras at the ready trying to pick up Jordan at second base. Sean Weiss deals a sinker hit inside out and foul to the lower deck off to the right. And the count stays no balls and two strikes. One thing about the Angels they have a terrific offensive team. They rank in the top five in a lot of areas in the American League and it is a ball club that is hitting 309 on the road. So they can spot you a couple. The pitch to Karras is low ball one and the count one and two. Dodgers by the way this is their eighth interleague game and they are four and three. They are 41 and 40 all time in interleague play. Sean Weiss hands it aside, looks in to get a sign. Now the one-two pitch to Eric Karras. The left-handed field, breaking ball, popped in the air, back a third down the line. A trio of angels, a diving attempt at a foul ball by David Eckstein to no avail. So Eckstein rolling on the warning track, almost to the base of the box seats, just couldn't quite catch up to it. Great effort. Gloss had quit on the ball. Anderson was out of the play. Eckstein gave it every bit that he had and then some. Did a complete roll over a couple of times. And now the scrappy shortstop goes back to work. The Angels over the last two seasons plus are nine and four against the Dodgers. And they've won five out of seven here. Two to nothing Dodgers first inning with one out Karras waiting Jordan off the bag at second and the one two pitch coming up fastball hit up the middle right behind second base is Benji Gill to take care of Karras and over to third goes Jordan so Karras hits it sharply but Benji Gill takes care of it and we have two nine. down and the battle will be Marquise Grissom Marquise Grissom. So if he joined us just a little bit late after his tourist flied out to left center a nice running catch by Darren Erstad Laduca cleared the left field wall to make it one nothing Dodgers Green cleared the center field wall to make it two nothing Dodgers Jordan then doubled and now Brian is 90 feet away with two out and Marquise Grissom trying to pick him up Marquise batting 279 with eight home runs 26 RBIs. Sean Weiss deals and the pitch at his feet. Ball one. Nice block by Benji Molina. 1 0. Paul Emmel is the plate umpire. Emmel out of Midland, Michigan. Grissom waiting. Now Sean Weiss turns on the rubber. The left handed back inside on the corner for a strike and the count 1 and 1. So the veteran Marquise Grissom has done a wonderful job along with Dave Roberts. Together they have not lost a beat whomsoever is playing center field. Jordan at third and the breaking ball is inside and low ball two and the count two and one. Sean Weiss looks down the barrel to get a sign Grissom trying to pick up Jordan. And the left hand is 2 1 pitch is hit foul right over the head of John Shelby coaching at first and the count two and two. We always do it whenever either team has a runner at third we check wild pitches. Sean Weiss does not have a wild pitch. Dodgers had a mess last night. Kaz she now has five wild pitches. Nomo who pitches tomorrow has four. 2 2 pitch on the way is swung on and missed and down goes Grissom. So the Dodgers leave Jordan but they had two home runs by LaDuca and Green and at the end of an inning as Pauly hits his first since the 22nd of May and Green follows two nothing Dodgers. A reminder tomorrow the Dodgers conclude the series with the Angels here and prior to the 110 start it's photo day at Dodgers Stadium. Fans can take pictures of the players at 11.15 a.m. Compliments of Fuji Film.
We're going to the second inning. Dodgers leading two to nothing on home runs by LaDuca and Green. And Garrett Anderson will start it off. The cleanup hitter hit one out last night. And the first pitch from Perez in for a strike. Garrett Anderson has done very well against the Dodgers. He has a 336 batting average against them. He comes into this game very hot. He has hit an eight straight, 17 of the last 18, takes a hook off the plate, and the count one and one. Garrett is second in the American League in multi hit games. He's at 28 of them. So the 1 1 pitch on the way, and the left hand hitter swings and comes up empty, and the count one and two. So Dallas Perez set the Angels down in the first inning, striking out Erstad along the way. And he has to count his way one and two to Garrett Anderson. Odalis into the windup, left hander deals, and that's popped up in shallow center. Going out is his tourist waiting and makes the catch for the out. So Garrett Anderson pops it up, one away, and the batter will be Tim Salmon. Right field number 15. So the right fielder, Tim who has been very, Salmon. very hot in the last month from the middle of May until last night. Tim Salmon has picked up over 50 points in his batting average so he's now hitting 282. So far in the month of June he has hit 419. So Tim at the plate Dallas Perez works one inside at the knuckles one ball and no strikes. And after Salmon comes Scott Spezio and he has worn out left hand pitching in the American League. One and all the count. Perez into his windup. Odalis back with a pitch a little high. And the count now. Two balls and no strikes to Tim Salmon. Salmon, a big guy. And of course, both teams shuddered when Salmon rushed by and hit Eric Karras shoulder to shoulder and knocked Eric flat. The 2 0 pitch on the way. And that thing is it up, but not far. Coming in is Marquise Grissom waiting and waiting and waiting and then makes the catch for the out. So Salmon pops it up to shallow center, two down in the second inning. And now Scott first Spezio baseman, coming up. Scott. Most first Spezio. basemen are usually power hitters. You think of them as guys who are going to hit 25 home runs. Scott Spezio probably won't do it. Eric Carra certainly wore that mantle for years, although he might have changed in his later years. Scott Spezio with only three home runs, but as we said, even though he has a 266 batting average, he's hit 100 points higher than that against left hand pitching, and he takes a strike on one. Spezio walked three times last night. Odalis Perez comes back, 0 1, good breaking ball, hit foul off the ledge in front of the Dodger dugout, and the count 0 2. Sitting in the far corner, Omar Dahl, Kaz Ashi, and usually Hideo Nomo hangs out down there. No balls and two strikes, the count to Spezio. Odalis Perez works one down and away, ball one. One and two to count. Spezio, 29 years old, he'd be 30 the end of September. Right hand batter lunges at a pitch and strikes out, badly fooled. Second strikeout for Odalis Perez, and at the end of an inning and a half, Dodgers two, Angels nothing. Bottom of the second inning, two to nothing, Dodgers, and a big crowd on hand to see game two of the series. Tomorrow being Father's Day, and there are quite a few dads and their sons here, along with daughters as well, as Mark Grasolonic takes low, ball one. Grasolonic hitting 248. He's been playing with a bad hand. Four home runs, 23 runs batted in. Sean Weiss comes back and works it away. And the count two balls and no strikes. Grasolonic, by the way, has committed only two errors this year. So he leads all starting National League second baseman in fielding. And he takes another one high, ball three, and the count three and oh. So Sean Weiss has won four in a row, and the Dodgers trying to block him for number five. They lead him 2 nothing in the second inning. A 3-0 pitch on the way, and Grasolonic takes low, ball four. So after two home runs and a double, 
Mike Socia sees his left hander pitching very carefully to Grasolonic and walking him. And now the batter will be Adrian Beltre hitting 248 with six home runs, 26 runs batted in. So Beltre at the plate made a fine play on the bunt by David Eckstein to start the game. Grasolonic off the bag at first. They're not holding him. He has one stolen base. And the pitch to Beltre is taken for a strike in the count 0 and 1. So Beltre working his way up and down the Dodger lineup and tonight batting eight hitting 248 with a half a dozen home runs 26 runs batted in. Rasolonic directly behind Spezio over there at first base and the strike one pitch Beltre has to get out of the way of the pitch of the knees and the count one ball and one strike. Although I didn't see it. People tell me in the confrontation in New York, Roger Clemens batting and Sean Estes pitching for the Mets, and they tell me Estes pitched behind the knees of Roger Clemens, and of course I'm sure there was a great furor over that. One one pitch on the way is taken low ball two, two and one. By the way, the Mets beat the Yankees eight to nothing, and in another confrontation between Roger Clemens and Mike Piazza. Piazza hit a home run. The big surprise, Sean Estes, the Mets pitcher, hit a home run against Clemens, and it was a cakewalk before 54,000. The 2 1 pitch to Adrian Beltre is instead a throw to first. Spezio is not holding the corner on the runner. He is at least five feet off the bag. In fact, his right foot is on the point of the cutout. And so the runner, Grasolani, can go directly behind him like a of quarterback in football. Two and one to count Adrian Beltre. Here comes Sean Weiss and it's a big chopper to the hole by the diving Eckstein in the left field. Stopping at second is Grasolani. So the Dodgers are in business now. First and second nobody out and probably their best bunting pitcher coming up. So Beltre splashes one into left field and the Dodgers first and second nobody out. Perez is Torres and Laduca coming up. Well, Dallas Perez has five sacrifices. He also has three hits, but you would expect that he would be bunting. We'll see. Well, Dallas, in this situation, Scott Spezio well in on the grass. Troy Gloss comes in a couple of feet at third. Now Spezio moves up some more. Sean Weiss out of his stretch. Showing bunt is Perez. Got it down. Beauty. It's picked up by Sean White. The out recorded at first with Benji Gill. And the runners move up to second and third. So Dallas Perez makes it look so easy. He drops the poached egg on toast out in front of home plate. And the Dodgers move up. Cesar is Torres. So second and third, one out. And Cesar is Torres coming up. Pistorius is a very good bunter. I mean, after watching Perez drop the bun for the sacrifice, the Angels also have to be thinking about the possibility of a squeeze play. Troy Gloss, even with the bag at third, Beltre coming down the line from third, so we'll see. Pistorius has seven sacrifices. Sean Weiss ready and deals, and the first one is a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Cesar backs out to check with Glenn Hoffman and of course it's going to be the runner Mark Grasolonic who will tip off the squeeze. He has to break before his tourist actually turns around to bunt if indeed there is a squeeze play. They also have to worry about a pitch out so let's see. Strike one pitch to his tourist a full swing foul so he can just about scratch the idea of a squeeze now 0 and 2. If his tourist was batting left handed you would certainly expect a squeeze but he's put up such good numbers he came into the game hitting 324 against left hand pitching. Second and third one out Paul LaDuca on deck two to nothing Dodgers second inning. Sean White's hands together and just as he's ready his tourist isn't Cesar backs out. LaDuca and Green homered in the first inning. Jordan doubled, but the Dodgers left him. Now they have a chance to add to their two to nothing lead. And the pitch to his tourist is a little flare in the left center base hit. 
two runs will score and the Dodgers lead four to nothing. So Grasolonic and Beltry carry the runs in and for his tourist he didn't hit the ball nearly as hard as the out he made in the first inning but this one dropped to the turf like that dying quail we've heard about and for his tourist he now has 17 runs batted in and the Dodgers and Odalis Perez are out in front for nothing Perez's sacrifice bun of course had a great deal to do with it. So Sean Weiss off to a very rocky start and the batter now is Paul LaDuca who put him on the rocks with a home run in the first inning. Sean Weiss out of his stretch a look over at his tourist the left hander with a close stance throws over to first and his tourist back on the bag. Cesar has not been a successful base stealer. He's been caught six out of nine times. He has the necessary ability to run but he doesn't have the knowledge of the pitcher's move so he rarely gets a good jump. Laduca waiting another throw to first. Sean Weiss does a good job of cutting down the running game by constantly going over to first base. So his tourists again taking the lead. Sean Weiss looks in. Laduca waiting. Now left hand to Sean Weiss. Sad a look over at his tourist and the pitch to Laduca. He tries to bunt. Does bunt on the chalk and goes foul. So Laduca trying to surprise Gloss and the Angels after hitting a home run in the first inning. Well, he tried to dump one and it just spun off foul like a runaway gyroscope. And the count 0 and 1. Odalis Perez has retired six in a row, striking out two. Meanwhile, the Dodgers trying to give Scott Schoenweiss a bad time, and they lead him with a couple of deuces in the first and second inning to lead four nothing. Tomorrow, Garrett Washburn with a record of six and two against Hideo Nomo with a record of six and five. 0 and one to count Oladuka. Sean Weiss from a stretch. A look over at his tourist and he goes over there again. Sean Weiss, so they tell me, because we don't see that much of him, does not have a particularly good move. So many left handers are blessed with a very good move. So what he does, if he doesn't fool you, He'll at least constantly throw over there to try and take a step away. Scott looks in to get a sign. Now he's ready. And the strike one pitch coming up. Left hander very deliberate. Now works Laduca who lifts it in the air back or first down the line. Salmon a long way but he is there in foul ground to make the catch. And holding on at first is his tourist. So Laduca fly ball to shallow right. That'll be the second out in the inning and it'll bring up Sean Green. Well Sean Green certainly has a lot going on. I mean he hit four home runs in one game in Milwaukee. He now has three consecutive home runs in this series. After striking out and fouling out last night he homered in the sixth homered in the ninth and homered in the first inning tonight. So Green at the plate with a runner aboard and two out. Sean Weiss set. Scott delivers down and away and off the plate. One ball and no strikes. Ramon Ortiz pitched a gem last night until Green and he was nailed twice. But Ortiz has the happy habit of giving up mostly bases empty home run. One ball and no strikes to Green. Sean White said a look at first now to the plate and Green hits a drive to center Erstad to the track at the wall it is gone his fourth consecutive home run and he gets a standing ovation as he goes around the base pass. Sean Green has homered in four consecutive at bats two last night and two tonight the batting gloves of course will go to very happy youngsters behind the dugouts <laughs> what a scramble there 
and Sean goes in. Boy, can he suddenly set a house on fire? And standing amidst the ashes is Scott Schoenweiss, and his pitch to Jordan is low, ball one. So with that home run, another $27,000 raised to support prostate research. Three tonight, and we've just begun. The 1-0 pitch on the way, Jordan fouls it back. So the Dodgers now, in 11 innings against the Angels, have hit seven home runs, four of them by Sean Green, and yet you can't be carried away by home runs. The Dodgers are trying to split the first two games. So one ball and one strike to Jordan, who fouls it away. A lot of people are wondering about last night. The Dodgers getting four hits, all four for home runs. That has been done before the last time, two years ago. April the 3rd, 2000, Oakland had four hits, four home runs, and they lost to Detroit, 7-4. The 1-2 pitch to Jordan is a high drive into right center. Back goes Erstad. This time he's running parallel to the wall and makes the catch for the out. But Scott Schoenweiss, with a four-game winning streak, has been spun around on his shield thanks to Sean Green hitting two, Laduca hitting one, and it is six to nothing Dodgers at the end of two. Dodger baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. By your local Lexus dealer, a new world of luxury. And by SBC, infinite character, SBC. Well, we're going to the third inning. And for those who were not in Milwaukee when Sean Green hit four home runs here in Los Angeles, he now has homered in four consecutive at-bats. The last two at-bats last night and the first two at-bats tonight. Scott Schoenweiss somewhat in shock, I'm sure, sitting in the Angel dugout and leading off is Benji Molina to take a strike and the count 0 and 1. The big catcher hitting 282 with 26 runs batted in and he had a big night last night two singles and a double. The strike one pitch foul ball 0 and 2. Benji Molina has thrown out 51 percent of opposing base runners. So he has really shut down the running game against the Angels. Waved at and missed. Third strikeout for Odalis Perez. As Sean Weiss has been laboring, Scott made 46 pitches in the first two innings. Perez made only 20. He made nine pitches in the first inning and 11 in the second. With Benji three strikeouts, he'll work Gill. now on Benji Gill. Jose Nieves is out on deck. He would bat for Schoenweiss. So one away, third inning, six nothing Dodgers. That's a strike. 0 and 1 to Benji Gill. Gill last night had one hit. Hitting 275. One and one. Interesting, the Dodgers and the Angels have played 27 games. The Angels have won 14 of them. But 13 of those 27 games have been decided by one run. But last night was 8 to 4. And tonight, Mike Socia is on the bad end of a 6 to nothing Dodger lead. Two and one. A change that seemed to be fluttering up there at 62 miles an hour. And the count two and two. Odalis Perez, six and three. But the comparison of strikeouts to walks tells you a lot. He has struck out 67 and he's only walked 13. And make it four tonight and 68 for the season. 
Remember he's coming off a 10 strikeout game against Baltimore. Nieve started to come out but he's been called back and Julio Ramirez is now coming out. So down in the bullpen Scott Shields who has just been called up from Salt Lake is loosening up. So Ramirez will bat four show and white. Number 39. Julio Ramirez. So Sean Weiss as short an outing as he has had this year I'm sure we'll look it up just to make sure. As Ramirez checks in he's bounced around playing for the Marlins the White Sox and the Angels. Good breaking ball for a strike. The shortest outing that Sean Weiss had this year. He went five and two third innings way back in April against Seattle and lost the game. But tonight he goes two innings and he's done. Last night, Kaz she went three and they took him out. One ball and one strike to Ramirez. One and two. Julio with a home run and five RBIs. Ramirez only 25 years old and down he goes. So Odalis Perez strikes out the side. He now has four consecutive strikeouts and five in the game. And at the end of two and a half innings six nothing Dodgers. Just a reminder, stay tuned after the game. Highlights of all of today's sports action will present the Southern California Sports Report. We'll have a Dodger postgame report and a whole lot more. The Southern California Sports Report coming up after the game. Scott Shields, long and lean, 6'1 and about 170 pounds. Out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, lives in Michigan now, 26 years old. He has been a professional for the last five years and he was recently called up from Salt Lake when the Angels gave their unconditional release to Donnie Wall. Harris a slow roller to third. Loss on the run. Interesting in looking at the pitch nine. count. Marquise. Odalis Perez striking out the side in the third inning on 11 pitches. So he has made only 32 pitches in the first three innings. Where Scott Schoenweiss made 46 pitches in the first two innings. Now Marquise Grissom struck out in the first inning. Marquise for whatever reason. Doing so much better on the road. Right. No balls, one strike. Curve ball, hit to Eckstein. Two down. As Grissom grounds out, the Dodgers' secret Second weapon base, goes up and gets the bat. Mark. That is six Mark year old Lennox. Logan Hall, Derek Hall's son. The last time he was the bat boy, the Dodgers scored a bunch of runs and you may remember Andy Ashby hit a home run. So the other day Jim Tracy said to Derek hey we need Logan here we got to score some runs. So Logan is in uniform in the dugout. The Dodgers have three home runs in two innings and lead six nothing. Ground ball up the middle there's Eckstein. So Shields sets him down one two three on some ground balls. And at the end of three, Dodgers six, Angels nothing. Leading off the Angels number 22, shortstop. Time Eddie now for our nine. Aflac trivia question. Mike Sosha is one of two former Dodger catchers ever to manage the Angels. Who's the other? We'll give you the answer in a little while. Ah, yes, Big Mike. Delighted for his success with Anaheim. Great, great guy. Strike to David Eckstein. 
We're talking about the minimum number of pitches used up by Odalis Perez. Scott Shields had just came into the game, retired the Dodgers in the third inning on six pitches. Three ground ball. So Scott Shields just called up. A very impressive inning. Still 0 2 to X time. Next time, bunted in the first inning, and Beltre made the trademark play and threw him out. Foul back out of play. Still 0 and 2. Concluding game tomorrow on UPN 13. Jared Washburn and Hideo Nomo. And don't forget the Dodger dugout show. That'll be on the air at 1230 tomorrow on UPN 13. And it will be a salute to Father's Day. One and two. Out the way. The guests on the dugout show tomorrow, Eric Karras, Glenn Hoffman, and as usual, Jim Tracy. And on the mound, Hideo Nomo trying to win his seventh. One ball and two strikes. Ground ball to short as Tourist is on it. One away. By the way, you saw Hideo Nomo staring out at the mound intently. At the end of the fifth inning, we'll tell you about an anniversary for Hideo and the Dodgers. Six years ago. Darren Erstad struck out in the first inning. Looking for a base hit number 1,000 in his career. Good pitch for a strike. Erstad, a remarkable player. Coming out of Jamestown, North Dakota, played football and baseball at Nebraska. He was a punter and a kicker for the 94 Cornhuskers. Shot knocked down by Perez. Quick reaction to get him. That thing was going to leave its initials on the belt buckle of Odalis Perez, but he was in perfect follow through position to handle it. Troy. So Erstad drilled it, and you can see. Perez was not leaning one side or the other. He had good balance in the follow through. And of course that is so important. Look at that. He's ready. They always talk about the follow through in golf and you keep thinking to yourself. Well once I hit the ball what's the follow through got to do with it. It has a lot to do with it. And the same in pitching. So two down and Troy Gloss the batter. Lost it back to the box in the first inning, but he just nubbed it. Breaking ball for a strike. That's the big difference, one of the big ones, between Ashi and Perez. Odalis getting that first pitch over for a strike. What an impressive looking ball player. Troy Gloss. High foul off to the right, and that will go out of play. Loss figures to be an all star for so many many years and boy he certainly has the an all star size he is 6'5 245 pounds he'll be 26 in August born in Tarzana well that figured huh well I tell you what Odalis Perez is very much on his game. He has retired everybody. He has struck out six, and it is six to nothing, Dodgers. Remember our Aflac trivia question. Mike Socia, one of two former Dodger catchers to manage the Angels. Who's the other? And you were absolutely right if you said Norm Sherry. A strike to Adrian Beltre, who singled in the second inning. In the second inning, Grasolonic walk, Beltry single, Perez sacrificed, and then his tourist single in two, and then Green hit one, his second of the night. 
Six runs, six hits for the Dodgers. Nothing across for the Angels. No runs, no hits, no errors, no base runners, nada. Troy Gloss makes it look easy. One away. You know, friends, a week from tomorrow, the Dodgers finish up their weekend series against the Boston Red Sox. Prior to the 1 10 p.m. start, it's autograph day at Dodger All Stadium. Right. All fans, 14 and under, will have the opportunity to obtain autographs from select Dodger players and coaches from 11 to 12 noon in lot 32, right here at Dodger Stadium. The Red Sox. 0 oh, and 1 to Perez, who already made a sizable contribution with that sacrifice in the second inning. Not to mention the fact that he's retired 12 in a row. Popped up, foul ground, loss coming over. Two down. Say so one thing, Scott Shields just comes in and throws strikes. He's retired five in a row. Number three. Four ground balls Cesar. and the foul. And now Cesar is tourist. Who will turn around to bat left handed. A lot of interest of course now in the ballpark. LaDuke on deck followed by Sean Green. And for Sean Green with two home runs in his last two at bats last night. Two home runs his first two at bats tonight. So four consecutive home runs. But now it's his tourists. Ball one. Dodgers with three home runs tonight of its 68 home runs. That would be 10 more than the Angels. Change missing. Ball two. So Green waits. Ground ball just fair inside third and down the line over to get it is Anderson is tourists on his way for two he is in there. So is tourists two for three as he hits one over the bag and down the line fastball and had some late movement on it it was working away and his tourists just went with it. Nice recovery by Anderson at the box seats, but is tourist with good running speed. Good slide. Watch. Comes right up. You don't see the old scissor slide as they used to call it. So a two out double will bring up LaDuca. Dodgers with seven hits, three home runs, and two doubles. Ball one. LaDuca homered and flied to right. Arizona and Detroit Randy Johnson pitching that game. It was scoreless in the fourth inning. One ball no strikes. That's in there. One and one. From the looks of things we have a bigger crowd tonight than last night. And last night we had 51,722. Sure looks like more tonight. We'll see. One and one to Paul LaDuca. If you can, hope you'll be over here with us tomorrow. Big slider, ball two, two and one. Dodgers trying to win nine out of 12 at Dodger Stadium. And of course, Sean Green waiting on deck. A shot inside third. That thing was ripped. So his tourist scores easily. LaDuca digging for two. He better hurry. He is out at second. LaDuca was running rather slowly around first. And he was nailed. But the Dodgers get an additional run. And at the end of four, it is seven to nothing Dodgers. And Anderson finally gets his man with a perfect throw on the money. And LaDuca out. Seven nothing Dodgers go to the fifth inning. LaDuca now with 30 RBIs. And the man who nailed him, Garrett Anderson, coming up. Watch the tag. 
The tag is going to be around the knee, and the foot is on the bag already. That's why Laduca jumped in the air. There you can see the leg extended. Now here comes the tag, and the foot had already hit the bag. And a good fake by Benji Gill, and Gill won the award. So Laduca burned, but he has two RBIs, and he goes back to work. Here's Anderson, who popped up in the second inning. 0 and 1. In case you joined us a little late, Odalis Perez has retired 12 in a row, and he has struck out six. He has struck out the side in the third inning. Back to Odalis. So he has retired 13 in a row, one down. Here's our upcoming schedule. The Angels here tomorrow on UPN 13 at 110 with a Dodger dugout show at 12:30. Toronto comes in Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. All three right here on Fox Sports Net 2. And of course, every game with Ross Porter and Rick Monday on Fox Sports AM 1150 and on KWKW 1330 AM. Jaime Harin and Pepe Inigues. All right, Tim Salmon fly to center in the second inning. And a drive to left, and that's going to break the bubble. That is gone, no doubt about it. So the perfect game, the no hitter and the shutout all down the drain on the home run by Tim Salmon, his 11th home run of the year, 40 RBIs for Big Tim and for Perez, the eighth home run that he has allowed this year. And as usual, that home run nets another twenty seven thousand dollars to support prostate First research. Number twenty three. <laughs> So that's one hundred and eight thousand dollars and we're only in the fifth inning. Last night one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. And here is Scott Spezio. Ball one. So Tim Salmon hits it out and the Dodger lead is seven to one. Breaking ball chopped to the hole backhanded is turret a long throw. Got it. Boy, he can do it, that little guy shortstop. Mm. So backhanding a ball in the hole, and he still threw out Spezio easily. Benji. The batter Benji. now will be Benji Molina, who struck out in the third inning. Seven runs, eight hits for the Dodgers, one run, one hit for the Angels. Ball one. Last year in August, Benji was really hot. He had nine consecutive hits. Now, ball. We've looked it up so often. The record for consecutive hits, 12. One and one to Benji Molina. Off the plate, ball two. So Perez retired 13 in a row, and then the home run. Couldn't get around on a very good fastball. It was clocked at 91. For Perez, his low hit complete game, he never really had one. Little ground ball squirted to Grassolani, but he had plenty of time after the game. So one run for the Angels, but don't go wandering off. Sean Green has homered in four consecutive at bats. He'll be leading off. 7-1 Dodgers, bottom of the fifth, and here's the man of the hour. He had two home runs last night in the sixth and ninth inning, 
Today he homered in the first and homered in the second. So he's had four home runs in consecutive at bats. By the way, no one has ever hit home runs in five consecutive at bats. When Sean had the four home runs in the game in Milwaukee, they were not consecutive. Mike Schmidt, the Hall of Fame third baseman for Philadelphia, had four consecutive home runs in the same game once. One and one. So Scott Shields just brought up from Salt Lake saying, well, this is a great way to pitch. But he's done well. Ball two, two and one. Shields retired five in a row, gave up a double to his tourist, a single to Laduca for a run. Ball three. Great discipline by Green. You know, he's aware of it, but he's not just going to swing wildly. Three and one the count. 22nd players have homered in four straight at bats over two days. And the crowd gets on Shields for the walk to Green. And I'm sure Scott Shields is saying it might be a walk to you, but it's bread and butter to me. Brian Jordan. Brian Jordan doubled in the first inning and fly deep to center in the second. Well, tomorrow is Father's Day. Scott Schoenweiss's little boy is a little more than a month old. So Scott will be able to forget tonight and this ball game by just going home and hugging little Hudson. It's amazing what babies can do to make you feel better. Green held on by Spezio. One and one. Last night we had five home runs in the game. So far tonight we've had four. Three by the Dodgers, one by the Angels. Now back one and two to Brian Jordan. On deck, Eric Carroll. Detroit, Arizona scoreless in the bottom of the fifth inning with one out. And Randy Johnson, the batter. Giants won this afternoon. Two and two. scored two in the first four in the second that was all for showing wise Shields got the Dodgers out in order surrendered a run in the fourth now here he's working the fifth and a high drive into deep left field and Jordan has hit it out the Dodgers have hit eight home runs in 13 innings against the Angels but again, home runs make headlines, but the Dodgers are trying to split. So Jordan joins the fun. And it's another $27,000 raised to support prostate research. So five home runs. That's $135,000 for prostate research tonight. They had 115 last night, and look at that lady. Hot diggity dog. She caught the home run. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Wonderful. So the Dodgers now lead 9 to 1. Karras 0 for 2. Boy, she certainly showed more emotion than Brian. That was great. Hard ground ball under the glove of Troy Gloss and on out into left field. So Karras is aboard and Marquise Grissom coming up. 
So a tough night for Sosha, but of course, in his long career, he's been on both ends of the good and the bad. And Marquis Grissom coming up. We're waiting. They have not flashed hit yet on that ground ball that went under Troy Gloss's glove. Grissom struck out, grounded out. Ball one. Well, they haven't said, and they certainly haven't changed. Now they put up hit. Okay. So Karras gets a base hit. One and one to count to Marquise. So with the hit, it should be 10 hits for the Dodgers if they want to keep that scoreboard on the ball. Two and one. So Brian Jordan joining the fun, hitting his 11th home run. And that pop in the air foul. Here comes Fizio. Got a lot of help. The whole bench hollering to him. Lots of room. So tomorrow, from the looks of things, certainly you could say it's going to be the rubber game, the deciding game of the three-game series. Jared Washburn, six and two. Hideo Nomo, six and five. And that'll be on UPN 13 at one o'clock with the Dodger dugout show at 12.30. So Grissom fouls out. And the batter now is Mark Grassalonic, who walked Rounded to short, 0 for 1. Hard ground ball to Eckstein. Quickly over to Gill, back to Spezio, and the double play. And at the end of 5, 9 1 Dodgers. Well, we told you a couple of innings ago, Hideo Nomo is celebrating an anniversary today. I'm not sure if he remembers. Six years ago today in Atlanta, he was in trouble. First and second, nobody out, a three and two count to Chipper Jones. Chipper hit a blooper into left field. Juan Castro went out, made an over-the-shoulder catch for the out. Through to second, they doubled up Marquise Grissom. And then to Shields, the line to Shields, threw to Eric Harris, and they tripled up Mark Lemke. A day to remember. Let's go back to this one. Dodgers leading nine to one bottom of the sixth inning uh, top of the sixth inning the scoreboard is a little out of whack now they're changing it and there's a drive into left field and that's going to go to the wall Jordan over to get it so Benji Gill goes into second base with a stand up double the Dodgers might be breaking in a new scoreboard keeper because they already have a zero up for the Angels in the six. They finally changed Here's the hit total the to ten. So they're having a little bit of problems. And the batter will be Jose Nieves, and he'll be coming up to bat for Scott Shields. So Nieves, who was on deck, called back, and they sent up Ramirez. Now Jose, with a seven-game hitting streak, checks in. Ball one. Lou Pote throwing down in the Angel bullpen. So he's getting ready. Meanwhile, the Dodgers leading nine to one, top of the sixth. Hit foul down the line. Out of play. Nancy B. Hefley, as she always does, playing an appropriate song. And a few minutes ago, she played the old favorite, What a Difference a Day Makes. Last night, all angels. Tonight, so far, all Dodgers. One and two the count to Nieves. Well, 
say from Venezuela facing Odalis. That's hit foul. Where'd it go? Got away. Nieves came to the Angels from the Cubs. He's been a pro for 10 years. Came up briefly in 94 with the Cubs. In 98, 99, 2000. Now here he is with Anaheim. One and two. Two and two. So Benji Gill at second. Nobody out in the six. Nine to one Dodgers. Perez has now allowed two hits. Home run and a double. Meanwhile, Arizona is leading one to nothing, top of the sixth inning against Detroit. Breaking ball hit to center. Grissom trying to run under it, and he's there. Tagging up is Gill, and he'll move over to third. Donnie Evis, a long out to center. Nice play by Marquise, and the batter will be David Eckstein. Eckstein tried to bunt, thrown out on a fine play by Beltre, and then grounded to short in the fourth inning. That's hit foul or first out of play. We were talking before about that triple play turned in by the Los Angeles Dodgers first one against Atlanta six years ago. The man who had called the last Dodger triple play was sitting almost next door to us doing the game for CBS the great Ernie Harwell. And we asked Ernie what do you remember about that triple play in 1949 and he thought a moment he said I don't rightly remember. And that kind of put the triple play in perspective. It's fun, it's exciting, but as the years roll by, you forget. Fouled at the plate, one and two. David Eckstein hitting 272. Eckstein has only struck out 13 times this year. And he's had close to 230 plate appearances. And he has struck out once in his last 17 games. So he's something. Hard ground ball base hit. So Eckstein doing a wonderful job. And by the way, we mentioned he was hitting 353 against left hand pitching this year. And with two strikes, singles to left, run batted in. Benji Gill brings it home. And it is now 9-2 to two Dodgers. And Darren Erstad, who has given up a lot of pain to left-hand pitchers during the year. Erstad batting 355. You know, there was an interesting observation made by a veteran scout when the Dodgers were in Arizona. Hard ground ball, base hit into right field. Eckstein will hold at second. And the observation was, don't believe it, left-hand pitchers don't get left-hand hitters out. So we looked it up, and for instance, we were thinking about Jesse Orozco. Left-hand hitters are eight for 26 against Orozco. Right hand batters were three for 22. So Erstad now singles to right. And the big guy, Troy Gloss, coming up. That base hit by Darren Erstad, the 1,000th career hit for him. So a milestone. The way he plays, he'll get a bunch more. That got away from Laduca for the moment. Runners holding. Dodgers nine, Angels two, sixth inning. 
double and two singles with one out. Lost overall batting 253. Two on Eckstein and Erstad. Loss hit back to the box and struck out. Odalis Perez has a half a dozen strikeouts. One and two. This is the first inning tonight where Perez will have to labor a little bit. His high in pitches in any inning 12 and his low 9. And the runners go on a foul ball. So down 9 to 2, Sosia runs him and Gloss fouls it off. So back to second goes Eckstein, back to first goes Erstad. One out. So Mike had him going. One and two the count to Troy Glott. Runners not going. Ball two. So this is the high as we guessed with Perez. As Jim Tracy setting up the infield. Odalis has made 17 pitches so far in the inning. And he has now piled up 71 pitches. One out. Runners go. Little ground ball. Going to be a tough play for his tourist, but he gobbles it and gets him. Runners move up to second and third, and a good play by his tourist. Boy, you have to have quick hands to make that play. Number 16. And he has that as well as quick feet. Watch the hands come up and get rid of it with something on it. So a slow roller advancing the runners to second and third. Nice play by his tourist. And the batter is Garrett Anderson, who is a butter and egg man for sure. 14 home runs, 47 RBIs, now hitting 311. But he has done a number on the Dodgers. Garrett tonight popped a short and hit back to the box. Hard ground ball, but Grasolonic on the grass. Double gets him, and the inning is over. So the Angels get one run, three hits, leave two, and at the end of five and a half, nine to Dodgers. Nine to two in favor of the Dodgers. Bottom of the sixth inning, we can check a few scores for you. The Tigers and the D-backs 1-1. One, one. A wild pitch allowed Tony Womack to score. And Detroit just got a run to even it up. San Francisco beat Oakland. Oakland had won eight in a row, and the Giants beat him six to two. Seven to four, Colorado over Cleveland. San Diego edging the Mariners right now two to one in the fifth inning. The Cubs defeated the White Sox 38,000 at Wrigley 7 3. The Mets before 54,000 beat the Yankees 8 nothing. Jose Nieves will take over at third base for Troy Gloss. So the new pitcher Lou Holt will go into Gloss's spot. Or a Fabregas will take over behind the plate. So a couple of changes as Lou Pote becomes the third angel pitcher. Lou born in Illinois lives over in Phoenix. a strike to Adrian Beltran. 
Beltry so far single to left scored a run grounded out. And for the first time this year starting in the number eight spot. One and one. Ball two. Fabregas will go into Benji Molina's spot and bat seven. And you can put Luke Holt in Troy Gloss's spot. Bottom of the sixth inning, 9 2 Dodgers. Pena made 18 pitches in the sixth inning. That's been his toughest inning thus far. Ground ball in the Eves. He takes care of it. One away. So Beltre grounds out and Odal is coming up. Odal is. Round ball back at first. Nice play by Spezio and quickly two out. So now Cesar as tourist will take some time to let Odalis Perez get back to the dugout. We'll use the time. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Dodgers may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Dodgers. So Perez after making 72 pitches finds a seat in the dugout and now here is his tourist fly to center single to center double to left. Ball one. On deck, Paul Laduca. Line drive into left field, base hit for his tourist. So Cesar is having a big night. That's his third hit. Hit number one off Lou Pote. Hit number 11 for the That's Dodgers. And the batter will be Paul LaDuca. LaDuca. LaDuca homered in the first inning. Flied to right in the second. Singled home his tourists and was cut down at second base by Garrett Anderson. His tourists, as we mentioned earlier, is not a particular base running threat. He's been caught six out of nine. That's ball one. On deck, Sean Green. Nine runs, 11 hits for the Dodgers. Two runs, four hits for the Angels. We've had five home runs in the game, a repeat of last night. Dodgers have hit four. Two by Green, one by LaDuca, one by Jordan, and one by Tim Salmon. Two and up. All three. Meanwhile, in the Dodger dugout, Chad Cooter talking to Mark Rasolani. And there's ball four. To Paul Laduca. So Sean Green, remember, homered in four consecutive at bats, walked in the fifth inning. So that's not an official at bat. So here he is again. Luke Pote had allowed three home runs in 34 innings. So Green with four home runs in a game against Milwaukee and four home runs in four consecutive at bats against Anaheim. Ball one. So all of a sudden Green jumps up and he has 20 home runs. Sammy Sosa leads the league with 25. 
Beware of Cassius. He has that lean and hungry look. One and all. Scott Shields walk green. Now Pote one ball and no strikes. Ball two. The scouts tell me that Lou Pote might very well have the best curveball on the team. And they can control the curveball even better than the fastball, which is clocked out maybe 90 to 92 miles an hour. He also throws a splitter. Oh, last year, two and one. Off speed for a strike, two and one. Lou Pote is a dedicated professional as Jim Colburn talks to Odalis Perez. Two and two. Lou Pote, 11 pro seasons, and for the first time in his career, spent an entire summer in the major league. Came out of the bullpen, became a pretty reliable middle reliever. Now deuces wild two balls two strikes two out two on fouled off Dodgers leading nine two Foul to the plate, trickling over into the photographer's well. Two and two. Hoke keeping the ball down on Green, but it is interesting. All of his home runs in this series have been below the knees. Two and two. Ball three. So the runners go on a full count with two down. And on deck, Brian Jordan. They're 1-1 one, one in the seventh inning. Detroit and Arizona. 2-1 to one, San Diego leading Seattle in the fifth. Runners go. And a change is strike three call. Sean Green pausing to disagree with Paul Emmel. Great pitch by Lou Pote and at the end of six Dodgers nine Angels two. Dodger baseball is brought to you by the Mercedes Benz dealers of Southern California by SBC infinite character SBC and by Pennzoil we're driving protection. And we're moving to the seventh inning, nine to two Dodgers. Odalis Perez has made 72 pitches, breezed through the first five, labored a little bit in the sixth inning, so we'll see how he goes in the seventh. Tim Salmon, Scott Spezio, and George Fabregas in that order. Salmon homered in the fifth inning. And everything went down the drain. The perfect game or the bid for the perfect game, the bid for the no hitter, the bid for the shutout. Off speed, salmon way out in front of it, one and one. Perez began the game by retiring 13 in a row and striking out six, and then salmon unloaded. Two and one. Tim Salmon breaks so well tied Brian Downing's angel record of 846 RBIs with that one tonight. Two and one. Ground ball to his tourists. One away.
So the batter now will be Scott Spezio, who struck out and grounded to short. We're in the top of the seventh inning, 9-2 Dodgers. Arizona tied up 1-1 with Detroit in the bottom of the seventh inning with Steve Finley at bat. San Diego edging Seattle 2-1 in the fifth inning. One ball, no strikes. Dodgers took the field one game in front of the Giants. If they win, they will remain one and a half in front of the Giants. One ball, one strike. Dodgers in a stretch of 15 games against the American League. Jim Tracy has already piloted his team against Baltimore and Tampa Bay. Now Anaheim. Next up Toronto followed by Boston and Anaheim again. Hopper to the hole that one's through. So Spezio one out single to left field and the batter will be George Fabregas. Catcher number six. George Fabregas. So Fabregas who is giving Benji Molina a little rest. Last year in May when Molina was banged up Fabregas replaced him. He had a bad right elbow. And a little pop fly is tourist out. Can't get it. Grissom picks it up. And there are runners at first and second. That might have been an error of enthusiasm. I think perhaps Grissom might have been able to make that play. Fabregas gets a pop fly single. Grissom had slowed up, as you can see. If he's on the dead run, he catches it. So it'll be a pop fly single. So the veteran. Let the kid have his way and it goes for the hit. So now Benji Gill struck out and doubled one for two. Angel scored a run in the fifth a run in the sixth and they're trying to keep it going here in the seventh. Nice save by LaDuca ball one. The best game that Odalis Perez pitched was this year in his career. That was that gem he served up in April against the Cubs in Wrigley Field. He allowed only one hit in nine innings, and it was a cakewalk. Dodgers won that game 10-0. 2-0. Oh. Meanwhile, Glenn Hoffman sitting alongside the Dodgers' secret weapon. Logan Hall sitting next to Dave Roberts. That's popped up. Only this time, Grassalani is going to let the veteran have his head, and Grissom makes the play. So the run is hold with two out, and Jose Nieves will be coming up. How'd you like to be six years old sitting in a big league okay. dugout? The Gee whiz. He's come to play too, hat and helmet. Oh yeah, he's already learned to use sunflower seeds. Welcome to the big leagues, Logan. Wait till Amy has to brush your teeth tonight. Right. On one. Nine runs, 11 hits for the Dodgers, including two home runs by Green, a home run by LaDuca, and a home run by Jordan. The Angels, two runs, six hits, a home run by Salmon. Whoa. Jose chasing one up and away, and the count 0 and 2. Spezio at second, Fabregas at first, two out. And another foul ball down the line out of play. Waiting his turn on deck. Visions of sugar plums dancing in his head would be David Eckstein. 
I mean Eckstein has three grand slams this year and shouldn't he ever get a walk or somehow get aboard to load the bases he'd have a shot at number four. Speezy on second Fabregas at first two out. Oh and two to Nieves. Ball one. Nieves finishing up for Troy Gloss at third. Fabregas finishing up behind the plate for Benji Molina. Showing why Shields and Coat and Dallas Perez into the seventh inning. One and two the count to Nieves. Foul ball. Nieves appeared as a pinch hitter for Scott Shields and flied to center in the sixth inning and then stayed in the game. Don't forget tomorrow, one o'clock, UPN 13, the Dodgers and the Angels one more time. Two and two. It'll be Jared Washburn and Hideo Nomo. With the Dodger dugout show beginning at 12:30, a tribute to Father's Day. Now Perez has come as close to walking a hitter as he has all night. Three and two to Nieves, and again, should he walk him, the bases would be loaded for Eckstein. Three and two. The runners go foul back. So Nieves is certainly making him work up there, and the count hangs three and two. And Eckstein waits. Restless too. Runners ready with two out. Runners go. Foul back. Meanwhile, over in Arizona, Mark Grace got a base hit to drive in Steve Finley in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Arizona has taken a two to one lead over Detroit. Randy Johnson started that game, but he is no longer in it. Well, Nieves certainly making Perez work. Here comes another three and two pitch. Instead, a look at second. So, of course, what Perez needs in the last couple of innings is an easy inning, but they've been getting progressively tougher for him. Three and two. Runners go. Fouled away. There have been nine pitches that Perez has had to make just in the Eves. The most pitches he made tonight in an inning 18 in the sixth inning. Now he's made 21 pitches in this inning. And nine to Nieve. Three and two. There they go. And is a high fly ball to green. Okay. No runs, two hits, and two left. And as Odalis Perez walks off, he walks off leading nine to two. Look at that baby on mom's shoulders. Just the best to look at. Uh. Great night in the ballpark. Odalis Perez getting congratulations all around. That usually means he's calling it a night. Down in the Dodger bullpen, Terry Mulholland begins to loosen up, and Odalis apparently. Same Buenos Noches. Uh, Terry's getting ready. Scott Spezio is now in left field. 
and Brad Fulmer is at first base. High foul out of play. So there's Brad Fulmer, a local boy, taking over at first. Scott Spezio moves to left. That means Garrett Anderson has the rest of the night off, chance to rest. 9 2 Dodgers, seventh inning. One and two to count to Brian Jordan, who doubled in the first inning, flied to deep right center in the second, and unloaded a two run home run in the fifth. Two and two. Lou Pot trying to finish up. Two and two to Jordan. Chase the bad ball. Did he get a piece of it? No. So Jordan strikes out. Don't forget the Dodgers finish up the series against Anaheim tomorrow. And also remember all fans 14 and under in attendance will receive a free disposable camera courtesy of Macy's. So hope you'll be out here with us on Father's Day. Here's Karras. Eric, couple of ground balls and a single under Troy Gloss's glove. Slow roll and the Eves was deep. Jose can't make the play. Do or die. So Karras comes up with a squib single and he's two for four tonight. So the Dodgers now with yet another hit. That's 12 hits to go with their nine runs. And the battle will be Marquise Grissom. Most closers only pitch the ninth inning. I think this might be the tenth time this year that Bob Brenly has used Myung Young Kim more than just the ninth inning. Kim is in there in the eighth inning again tonight. So Kim will be asked to not only close, but he's asked to close two innings with Arizona leading two to one. And Detroit just had a two out double, so they have the tying run at second base. We're nine to two Dodgers, bottom of the seventh. Grissom struck out, grounded out, and fouled out. Big curveball for a strike. One and two to Marquise. Fastball has popped back at first. Palmer angling down the line. Coming over is Benji Gill. And a fine play. So Karras has to hold. So Gill going way down the line to take a possible base hit away from Grissom, and that'll bring up Mark Rasolani. Mark Rasolani walked, grounded to short, and hit into a double play. 0 for 2. I think the difference between May and June is the hand that has been bothering him for the first two weeks of the month. One ball and no strikes to Mark. Hitting 245. Breaking ball strike one and one. Dodgers scored two in the first, four in the second to chase Scott Schoenweiss, then one in the fourth and two in the fifth at the expense of Scott Shields. Meanwhile, Odalis Perez began the game and retired the first 13 in a row. Gave up a home run to Salmon, and then in the sixth inning, 
Benji Gill doubled and David Eckstein single got him in. So it's 9 2 Dodgers. Karras at first, two out, bottom of the seventh. One and two to Grasselline. Swung on, missed in the tag. So no runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of seven, Dodgers nine, Angels two, enter Terry Mulholland. Remember, the Dodger Coca Cola Family Pack is back, and family packs include four reserve level tickets, four Dodger dogs, four Cokes. And And a parking pass for $39. The family pack available at every Sunday and Wednesday home game all season long, so you can take advantage of it tomorrow. For more information, give us a call 323 2241 hit. Check our website at Dodgers.com. Iran Boca Chica is now in left field for Brian Jordan, and he enters the game and will bat ninth. Terry Mulholland will take over on the mound. And Mulholland will go in Brian Jordan's spot if you're keeping score. Right. David Eckstein. Thrown out by Beltre on a bunt. Grounded out in single. Ground ball to Beltre who kicks it. So Beltre commits his 11th error. And Eckstein aboard. Nobody out. Aaron Ekstad coming up, and it shows you how to protect yourself and the lead. A nice defensive play by Odalis Perez to get Darren back in the fourth inning. Perez in perfect position to protect the lead. Erstad struck out, hit back to the box, single to right. Ball one. Darren Erstad batting 295. Darren Erstad, when you look back at his career in the big leagues, David Eckstein just did get back. Erstadt hit 299 and 296 in his first two seasons, but then he slumped, hitting only 253 in 1999. And as Erstadt said, until I die, that year 99 will be fresh in my mind. All I have to do is look at the back of my bubblegum card, and it scares me. So he responded the only way he knows how. Worked hard, studied videotape, etc. Now he hits a flare to center. Grissom traps it, throws to second. Not in time as it gets away. Marquise had David Eckstein between the devil and the deep blue sea. David wasn't sure if it was going to drop or caught. And when Marquise finally traps it, he had a quick off balance the throw, angels. but it went to the wrong Not side of the bag. Number two. Adam Kennedy is now going to come up and bat for Lou Pote. And for Darren Erstad, a fly ball single. So Mulholland on the error. Now the base hit. Nobody out. And here is Kennedy hitting for Pote. Right. All in one. Adam Kennedy, born in Riverside, lives in Newport Beach. That's on the corner in the count 0 and 2. Adam Kennedy came to the Angels in the deal that sent Jim Edmonds to St. Louis. Kennedy hit 270 last year. No balls, two strikes. Chase the bad one coming off the bench and down he goes. So Kennedy strikes out and now Brad Fulmer will be coming up. 
So three pinch hitters used by Mike Sosha. Kennedy struck out. Ramirez struck out. And the Evans fly to center. So Homer, who just and took over at first Homer. base, now has a chance to swing the bat. Brad, of course, is no stranger to the Dodgers. He played a lot of games here. Basically a, a DH and a very good one over in the American League. Red, born in Chatsworth, foul back. They tell me if you follow the Angels every day that Fulmer carries a bat around wherever he goes, somewhat like Dave Hansen. And closer Troy Percival calls him Captain Caveman after the cartoon character who always carried a club. Red is an even 6 220. Little foul ball. And the count 0 and 2. Brad graduated from Montclair Prep High School in Van Nuys. Boy, he was a big man on campus there. He had 568. He was named Division Three Player of the Year in California. Received scholarships offer to Stanford, and decided to go into the Major League Draft. And he was with Montreal. With Montreal in 97, 8, and 9. Went over to Toronto for two years. And I mean unloads. And that's gone. Heading into the bleachers. And it is 9 to 5 in favor of the Dodgers. And Mulholland is a risk at best. So Brad Fulmer hits it in the bleachers. And the Angels breathe a little life into the game. And another $27,000. For the research for prostate cancer, that gets the total up to when well, it's 162,000, I believe. We'll add them up. 15, so Fulmer 10, drives it in the seat. Seven. And just like that, it's nine to five in favor of the Dodgers. And the Dodger bullpen will loosen up as Tim Salmon checks in. So this one is far from over. And what an explosive night. Mickey Hatcher, the irrepressible one. One of the coaches for the Angels. And there's a fly ball to Grissom in center. And that's the second out. Down in the Dodger bullpen, Paul Quantrill begins to loosen up. For Mulholland, he is struggling, let's face it. Terry has only worked 16 innings, and he's given up eight home runs. And with two out, Scott Spezio, now the left fielder, coming in. Struck out, grounded out, single to left. Has hit 368 against left hand pitching this year. Ball one. One ball and no strikes. That's in there. One and one. Nine runs, 12 hits for the Dodgers. Five runs, eight hits for the Angels. We've had six home runs tonight, five last night. And that's going to be banged down the right field line, and it's in the corner. So Spezio is on his way for two, and he's going to hold on. So a double to right by Spezio. And Mulholland really struggling. And the batter will be George Fabregas. Meanwhile, Tracy, Riggleman, and Colburn have one thing to console them, and that's a four-run lead. So 9-5 in favor of the Dodgers. Fabregas finishing up for Benji Molina. Had a bloop single to center in the seventh inning. Time. And here comes Jim Colburn. Now Colburn. I don't believe has ever brought a hook. Anytime that Jim goes out the pitching coach it is to instruct. If Tracy comes out it's another story. Jim checking on the progress of Paul Quantrill. So 
with Terry Mulholland. Struggling, had been out with a bad back for almost a month. And the batter, George Fabregas. Mulholland has had an incredible career. I mean, let's face it, he's been in the big leagues since 1986. Right. At second base, Scott Spezio with two out. 0 and 1 the count to Fabregas. Ground ball foul down the line. In 1990, when Terry Mulholland was pitching for the Philadelphia Phillies, that would have been his great moment. He had left San Francisco to go to Philadelphia, and he came back to pitch against the Giants and pitched a no hitter. But that was 12 years ago. 0 and 2. Got him. So Fabregas goes down, but not before the Angels come up with three. And at the end of seven and a half innings, Dodgers nine, Angels five. Dodger baseball is brought to you by Jack in the Box. By MGD, cold filtered for a pure beer. By Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. And by Buick, it's all good. We're going to the bottom of the eighth inning here at Dodgers Stadium with the Dodgers leading the Angels 9-5. Interesting fill-up to the game. It is now in the hands of two veteran left-handers who were teammates with the Giants back in 1986. Dennis Cook and Terry Mulholland. Terry now with the Dodgers and the much traveled Dennis Cook with Anaheim. As far as the crowd is concerned tonight it's a whopper 52,165. It is proclaimed the fifth sellout crowd at Dodger Stadium this year on the heels of a crowd of 51,722 last night and like last night a lot of explosions we've had six home runs hundred and sixty two thousand dollars to cap cure for prostate cancer research and now here is Beltre then Boca Chica and this tourist right Dennis Cook for the last four years had been with the New York Mets Dennis the father of triplets attended the University of Texas he was teammates of Greg Swindell and Bruce Ruffin. Played in the College World Series a couple of times. And first came up to San Francisco. And like Mulholland, he went from San Francisco to Philadelphia. Pitched for the Dodgers briefly in 90 and 91. Then Dennis bounced around from the Dodgers, went over to Cleveland. Then to the White Sox, then back to Cleveland, Texas, Florida. So he's moved himself and his wife and triplets all over the country. Dennis is 39. He'll be 40 in October. One and two. And Beltre strikes out, goes one for four, one away. You know one week from tomorrow the Dodgers finish up their weekend series against the Boston Red Sox and prior to the 110 start it'll be autograph day at Dodger Stadium all fans 14 and under will have the opportunity to obtain autographs from select Dodger players and coaches from 11 a.m. to noon in lot 32 right here at Dodger Stadium Sunday the 23rd and then the Red Sox Iran Boca Chica Gets a chance to give Brian Jordan a rest and gets a chance for a little playing time. When the Angels come up in the ninth inning, Benji Gill is due to start it off. It would be Gill, Nieves, and Eckstein. Own one. 
the only pinch hitter available for Mike Sosha is Orlando Palmiro, left hand batter. One and one the count. So, boy, is this a different series. Going into the series, half of the 26 games played between these two teams were decided by one run. And they have been scrambled last night and again tonight. And tomorrow, Jared Washburn and Hideo Nomo. Home runs by Salmon and Fulmer. Laduca. Jordan and two by Sean Green. They have soundly abused the pitchers in this series. One and two. Whoa. Just did get out of the way of it. Two and two. Dennis Cook gives you an awful lot of motion. I mean a big leg kick a full extended left arm. There is a lot going on when he pitches. He's been blessed with a great arm. Curve ball whacked down the left field line. Foul ball. There you go. Fives. Brought my glove. <laughs> but I, I think the, the big moment tonight was that woman who caught the home run in the bleachers. I mean, she was so delighted. It made everybody feel good just looking at it. Two and two to Iran Boca Chica. Nine five Dodgers, bottom of the eighth. Three and two. Yeah, just thinking about it. Dennis Cook and Luis Gonzalez would have a lot to talk about. Each father of triplets. Father's Day tomorrow. Three and two. Fouled away. To repeat, the Angels have Benji Gill, one for three, Jose Nieves, 0 for two, and David Eckstein, one for four, do up. Anybody gets aboard, then Darren Erstad. Two big hitters are now out of the Angel lineup Troy Gloss and Garrett Anderson. Three and two. And ball four. So Cookie, as they call him, a little angry at himself for walking Boca Chica. Short stop the and three. the batter will be Cesar Asturias and tennis. Mike Sosha. Moving his infielders around a little bit. Cesar Asturias Flied hard to left center field, looped a single to center for two RBIs, doubled sharply inside the bag at third, singled into left field. So he's three for four, hitting 249. If you can guess, you would think you could run on Dennis Cook because of all that leg action. He doesn't have the so-called slide step at all. That time he did. And a shot back. Hook knocks it down. Can't pick it up in time. Cesar is first. Slaps it back at the veteran left-hander. It'll be a base hit, and it's his fourth hit. Cook was Jackson fighting that thing to a draw, lost oh. it, then slipped, no, then guys. never could pick it up. And so that would be the first four-hit game for Cesar as first. The 
Now Dennis Cook was angry about the walk to Boca Chica. No doubt very unhappy on that comebacker that got away. And here is Laduca with Sean Green on deck. Ball one. Laduca homered in the first inning, singled home a run in the fourth, was cut down by Garrett Anderson trying to turn it into a double. One and up. That's a foul ball that turned Glenn Hoffman around and the count one and one. Watch this going hooking right at Hoffman and Hoppy able to turn away from it. We also had a line drive go right over John Shelby's head tonight. One and one. Yeah, he's grinning at Hoffman over in the third base coach's box, but they refuse to wear helmets. And that's going to be poked by the diving Fulmer into right field. And Boca Chica will score as the throw goes into second, and the Dodgers lead 10 to 5. So Laduca has had a big night. A walk, two singles, and a home run. Three runs batted in. And now Sean Green. Right fielder number 15. Sean Green. Dennis Cook. Gave up a total of eight home runs last year, but he was pretty tough on left handers. They hit only 215 against him. Green one for six against Cook in the past, and it was a home run. Ball one. Green hit a home run in the first inning, hit a home run in the second inning after homering his last two at bats last night. So he had homered four consecutive at bats, walked in the fifth inning, and then struck out in the sixth to break the string. Now he's up there with his tourists and Laduca and one out. One and one. Al Levine down in the bullpen getting ready for the Angels. Ten runs, 14 hits for the Dodgers. Five runs, nine hits for the Angels, and it's a very tough night for a pitching coach. But black eyes riveted on Dennis Cook. One and one. Ball two. Last year it was the right-hand hitters who really plagued Dennis Cook. Right handers hit five home runs against him and only 95 at bats. Final score Arizona beat Detroit three to one. So the Dodgers trying to keep pace, win the game, and remain one back. Ball three. Not sure what's going on with Seattle at San Diego. The last time we heard it was two to one in favor of San Diego but that was quite a while ago. So we'll see if we get a read it is three to one San Diego top of the eighth inning. Three and one to Sean two on one out ten five Dodgers. That's a strike. That's the second time that Sean Green can't believe that a pitch was a strike. When he was called out in the sixth inning, he was sure it was ball four. And this thing just moved right in about a letter high. So he has to get the bat. That is not the way to build friendships with plate umpires. Three and two with one out. 
The one thing about Sean, he is so very, very quiet as he goes about it. So three and two with one out. So Green strikes out a second time and this time has a few remarks to make I'm sure on two pitches but down he goes. When he struck out earlier in the sixth inning this was Lou Pope pitching and he thought that was inside and Paul Emil said no it got the corner and he couldn't believe that. Then he started at first base. Now he's a little angry. So two down and Jeb Rebele is coming up to bat for Terry Mulholland. So Paul Emmel said if he if he wasn't an umpire he'd be a financial advisor in Michigan. All right. Right. Rebel A hitting 231. Eric Carros on deck is Torres at second and LaDuke at first with two out. High fly ball to left center. Erstad and Spezio. It will be Erstad, and that's that. So the Dodgers get a run on a walk and two hits. They leave two. And at the end of eight, enter Paul Quantrill, Dodgers 10, Angels 5. It has been a wild game. The Dodgers leading 10 to 5. Dodgers have hit four home runs for the second straight game. John Green, two home runs for the second straight game. And Odalis Perez pitched a gem, retired the first 13, striking out six. Finally went seven and allowed two earned runs. Mulholland pitched one inning. And now they're asking Quantrill to close with Eric Gagne warming up back of him in the bullpen. So Quantrill has to get a couple of outs here. Benji Gill, a strike. Gill struck out, double the left, scored a run, and flied to center. Made a nice play on a pop fly down the right field line, hit by Marquise Grissom. Benji hitting 279. Ten 10 runs, 14 hits for the Dodgers, five runs, nine hits for the Angels. That's a strike. And Benji Gill can't believe it. And he joins the Sean Green Club, honoring Paul Emmel. A reminder, stay tuned after the game for highlights of all of today's sports action. The Southern California Sports Report. We'll have a Dodger postgame report and a lot more. The Southern California Sports Report coming up after the game. All right, one out in the ninth. And the batter, Jose Nieves. Nieves came in as a pinch hitter for Scott Shields and flied to center. Stayed in the game at third base and flied to right. So he's 0 for 2. Tomorrow, the concluding game, the so called rubber game, should the Dodgers win this one. Garrett Washburn, Hideo Nomo at 1. That'll be on channel 13, UPN 13, with the Dodger dugout show at 12 30, dedicated to Father's Day. A flare to right center, base hit. Grissom up with the ball, and Nieves holding on. So a one out single will bring up David Eckstein. Short stop number 22. David Eckstein. David Eckstein is one for four. Started Terry Mulholland's problems in the eighth inning on the ground ball that got away from Adrian Beltre. Object or two, maybe a ball loose in right field. Okay.
One ball and no strikes. Perez, Mulholland, and Quantrill. Schoenweiss, Shields, Holt, and Cook for the Angels. One out in the ninth. That's a strike. One and one. Next time hitting 274. Sell out crowd tonight, 52,165, although quite a few have headed for home. Ball two, two and one. Quantro, a setup man. And you can bet Jim Tracy will watch him very carefully because it is not his usual role. Big ground ball, Karras, short hops, he has to do it himself. So two down, Nieves takes second base, and the batter will be Darren Erstad. Center fielder number 17. That was kind of a tough play Darren for Karras. He was caught in between hops, and Quantrill was not getting over there to cover. So, Eric, good play. Darren Erstad struck out, hit back to the box, single to right, and single to center. When he hit back to the box, he almost cut Perez in in half and Odalis made a fine play. The worst at two for four batting two ninety eight. Great young player. Right. Orlando Palmiro is the last player that Sosa can use. He's a left hand hitter and Mike now has used his last position player. Palmero is on deck and the crowd now trying to cheer Quantrill to shut it down with two out in the ninth. Brown ball to his tourists. So Quantrill comes in gets the outs in the ninth inning. Gagne did not have to work. Our player of the game certainly Odalis Perez who held a very tough hitting Angel Club to two runs in seven innings. And with Odalis picking up his seventh win, he's now won three straight and his record is seven and three. We had six home runs tonight, two by the Angels, four by the Dodgers. So that adds up to $162,000 raised for prostate cancer research. Thanks for helping keep Dad in the game. Well, that'll do it for tonight. A reminder tomorrow again, Jared Washburn, Hideo Nomo on UPN 13 at 1 with the Dodger dugout show at 12.30. Once again, the final score, Dodgers 10, Angels 5. For Ross Porter and Rick Monday, this is Vin Scully saying so long from Dodger Stadium. Right now for Dodger postgame coverage and all the day's local sports news, let's go to the Southern California Sports Report. Good night, everybody.